write down the functions of displacement and velocity, state the maximum speed. Okay, so here we go, part A. I want a displacement function, x, and I have a look at everything that has been presented to me. When I see uh, about the origin, period, and amplitude, okay, each of these, yep, each of these corresponds to um, one of those constants that I mentioned in like just our Rain, uh, normal form for um, our equation. So for example, about the origin, right? Which, which constant does that refer to? Which constant does that refer to? If for instance, I said, let's actually, can you quote for me what's the um, equation that's, that's on the reference sheet? It'll say x equals, <coughs> what is it, b plus? A plus I think it's a cos nt plus alpha, maybe? Something like that, yes? Mm -hmm. So of these constants, which one does this tell us about? B. It tells us about B, right? So I'm going to say B equals zero, okay? Because I'm moving about zero. Uh, when I look at this one here, which constant does this tell me about? Period. How do I change the period or frequency of this thing? It's about the coefficient of T, right? So therefore, when I have a look at this, I'll come back over here. Period, how do we work out, if I gave you a function like say, um, you know, 15 plus 12 cos 3t plus pi on 6, okay, so I'll just put a whole bunch of random numbers in there. How do I work the period out from that? Good morning. Okay, so I factorize the inside, yes. If there was a 3t plus whatever there, okay, how am I getting the period out of that number? 3, what do I do with it? Coefficient of t. What do I do with the coefficient of t? 2 pi on 3. I do 2 pi on... 3, right? So 2 pi and 3 would in fact be the period, okay? But they've given me the period here. I'm trying to find out what the n is. I'm going in reverse order. So I'm going to say 2 pi on n period is 24. Does that make sense? And then, of course, all I need to do here is make n the subject, yes? So I'm going to, <coughs> excuse me, multiply n across, divide by 24. So that puts that guy over there. This is going to be pi on 12. Yep. Okay, good. Amplitude 120 meters. That's an easy one. That's A. And then when you have a look at the rest of it, okay, we then get to make a choice, okay? Uh, you can see here, when T equals zero, X equals zero. So I can choose to change one of two things here. One of two things. Firstly, just in the present form that's in right now. So what I'm reading off at the moment is 120 cos pi on 12t plus alpha. I don't know what alpha is yet, okay? Now, in order to make this happen, when t equals zero, I'm at the origin, and I'm moving forward. So this is um, helpful for all of us. Draw yourself a little drawing, right? A little, a little graph. And if I'm starting the origin, and I've defined forwards, which is my initial direction, as positive, okay? So I start at the origin. There I am, starting at the origin times zero, and I move forwards, positive direction. Okay. So clearly, you can see, to make this into this, I can do one of two things. What do you think is the most obvious thing to do? Okay, I think the most obvious thing is to not use cos, right? But to use sine. And that is in fact what we will do in a second, okay? But it's important, you know, that's not the only thing you can do. If I wanted to keep it as cos, I would, I would change the alpha, right? So this is the phase here. So all I'd have to do is cos usually starts up here. So I'm just going to... Which direction am I going to go in? The right. So, so, I'll just draw it here. Minus left. This is what cos usually looks like. Right? Oh, to the left. You should be to the right. To the right. <laughs> to, to, the, to the left, to the right. Okay, so let's think about this, right? This, let's forget about all the particular numbers right now. Let's just call this one cos x. Okay. So what I really want is this graph, right? So to turn this graph into this one, for example, look at that point there. Look at that first x-intercept, right? or time-intercept, right? or it is an x-intercept on what I've drawn, right? So my dad's me go ahead. Which direction does that have to move in to turn it into this graph? To the right. Yeah, this, this is pi on 2 right here, yes? Whereas that's pi, okay? So I've got to go that way 
So this would be, if I actually had this graph here, I could express this as cos of x, how do I shift something to the right? Minus, minus pi on 2. Okay, so that would work just fine. Um, I would have to actually work out what would happen with the particular numbers here, but clearly, I don't really want to do this. I don't want to muck around with phase. Um, I only change phase when I have no choice. Okay, it's much more natural to say, okay, if I begin at the origin, choose sine. If I begin at an extremity, choose cosine. That's the simplest way to do this. Okay. Having chosen sine, what does that mean about alpha? In this case, alpha. It's zero. That's the whole reason why we chose sine. Okay. Fantastic. So we have slowly dissected the question. Yes. Why, like, if we change the phase, you said, why do we need to change the number? <coughs> if, for instance, yeah. uh, I gave you, okay, let's think about this. Remember, I said, okay, this is cos of x minus pi on two. Yeah. Yep. If I wanted to, but sorry, let me start again. Because this is cos of x minus pi on two, or maybe I should say, like, say t minus pi on two. Okay. I don't actually have something which has a a period of 2 pi. I actually have something which is a period of uh, 24, right? So if I change this coefficient here, let's give you a simple example. Suppose I change that to 2 t instead of just t, right? If I slap a minus pi on 2 on this, that hasn't been shifted pi on 2 radians anymore. How far has that been shifted? How would I be able to tell? There's something I can do algebraically to help me see because it's not immediately obvious. Yeah, I actually have to factor that 2 out, don't I? So I would write this. Okay, this is a very easy trap to fall into because it looks like, well, does it matter? Does it matter which one of these you do first? Does it matter whether I shift my phase or whether I change the frequency? And the answer is, yes, it does matter, right? Because in fact, there's not pi on 2 acting or changing t. It's changing two t, so that's why it sort of gets diluted. It gets sort of shared out to two different things. Um, if you wanted to do it that way, yes. But I'm just saying that this is not what you get. This is not the way the equations are stated, right? You wouldn't usually write it in the form that you're describing, uh, like this. N of t plus alpha. This is what you're talking about, but simple harmonic. Motion is almost never expressed in this form. It's expressed in this form. Okay. So if you wanted to do it that way, then yeah, that's that's what you would do. So you would get pi on two there, or whatever you wanted. But you can see this whole thing just opens up a can of worms. I don't really want to go down. Um, that was a mixed metaphor. But anyway, okay. I want to avoid mucking around with phase. All right. Are we ready to just state this equation now? What is this um, displacement equation that we have determined? Did someone give it to me from the beginning? <laughs> cool. That was another good, meaningful contribution to the <laughs> discussion. Okay, excellent. I've got my displacement function. What am I going to do next? Yep. Excellent. So to find the velocity, I'm just going to go with this guy. The pi on 12 comes out the front, which leaves me with 10 pi. Thank you very much. Sine turns into cosine. This guy stays the same. Okay, and you don't need to do any fancy calculus after this to state the maximum speed. You can just look at that equation and you can tell me what the maximum speed is. It's going to be 10 pi. Very good. Uh, 10 pi what? Meters. Meters per second. Very good. <coughs> yes, those pesky pies. 